Hi there! You're watching Gardens and Graveyards and today we're in the garden and we are going to be pruning our rhododendrons. So I shared with you about a month ago the tour of roadies in our garden and now it's time to trim them all back. So rhododendrons bloom on old wood which means that this year's growth is going to hold next year's blooms. And so if you don't prune them right away after they're done blooming you have the potential of cutting off next year's blooms. So I need to get that done this week um, or I'm gonna lose my little window of opportunity. Most of our rhododendrons um, don't need to be hard pruned. They just need to be kept in check because we have a smaller garden and they don't, I can't let them just grow to their full potential or they'll take over spaces that we don't want them to take over. Um, I do have three rhododendrons down the lower garden that are still in bloom because they're the last bloomers and I'll share that with you in this video. But they get to grow pretty much as big as they want, although occasionally I have to go in and do rejuvenation pruning to make sure that they, you know, continue blooming in a way that I want to see them bloom. Let's just get into it. This rhododendron right behind me is a red rhodi. And I'm trying to make a decision if I want to keep it tall or if I want to bring it all the way down. I started doing some re rejuvenation pruning on it um, over the last couple of years so that it could be a smaller shrub. But I have just kind of have to make that decision um, for this year. And then turn around and I have this azalea right here. And it doesn't get... It doesn't grow a lot. It's just that it's kind of wooly and unruly looking right now. So I'm just gonna take some shears and basically hedge it and um, shape it up, you know. The roadie here, you could see already that this is the, this is where um, the new growth was last year. This is the new growth for this year. And this one's actually extra sticky, which reminds me I need to go get some gloves. Anyways, let's just do this. Yeah, I agree because it's kind of encroaching into the walkway. Yeah. yeah. But this one is wrapped around it, so I don't know what it's going to do. Uh -oh. It might lose its integrity. Just fine. Oh wow, what a difference, holy crap. Huh? What a difference. Yeah. This one doesn't have anything that's short. Shit. This is too tall, right? As it crossed right there, right? Yeah. And then we'll see what the other one looks like. Wow. That way this stuff has 
some sun. Just a little bit. Funky. Funky gross. Wow. <sighs> I think for this year, that's good. Okay. okay, good job. So Spencer and I have made the executive decision to remove this rhododendron. I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute, but um, we have done rejuvenation pruning on it and it came back nice and full. It looks really beautiful from a distance, right? We've treated it, we've treated the leaves and we've treated the soil and we were really diligent the last year of getting all the leaves off of the soil as they were dropping but it's still really diseased. The new, new growth comes out nice and lush and beautiful, but then it, as it ages, even a month old, it starts um, showing black signs of distress. Black spot, right? I don't know if it's black spot or rust, but whichever it is, it looks really terrible because it also has like that crinkly leaf curl thing and black spot doesn't do that. So as you get in closer here, you can see it has all of these. So it's got the color chlorosis going on. It has powdery mildew, has black spot. It's got these crinkly leaf things going on. This is what they look like right before they drop with all of it. And you can just see like all the branching is really small in there. It's not getting any like good, strong, even this really old one is really skinny for being that old. So we're gonna cut it down at the base, right down here, and <laughs> right along here, we're gonna cut it down and we're gonna see if it sprouts clean and if it doesn't, next spring we'll totally dig it out. So you can see how bright green it looks right, right away, but then one leaf node down, it's already showing these signs. Like this is only a month old, and it looks like that. So, I think it's multiple, multiple things going on. Yeah. I'm leaning to it. 
Ya. a little bit sad but hopefully worth it and now we're gonna move into this one which you can see it's very sparse on the bottom and it didn't bloom very good this year so this one's gonna just get some rejuvenation pruning which means I'm going to prune down to these or find a good healthy growth so I'll cut I'll cut like right here and right here and right here and we'll just go along and do that and we'll be getting rid of all this top foliage and let it come back. So this rhododendron was cut back significantly uh, two years ago and then on this side and then this side was cut back last year and it came back so beautiful. So, I mean, look at that. You can't even see through it. It's beautiful. So even though this looks pretty sad and this one is just starting to flush out on the bottom and the top doesn't look great, I have confidence that it's gonna look like that eventually. So I just brought down the sides a little bit so we can keep the layers. I want to be able to see my rows really clearly and the lilacs really clearly. Now we come to this pieris. All this bright green yellow growth is the new growth. But what we really love about this pieris is that pink brand new gro growth. And if you, these will darken up to this darker color and if I don't keep it trimmed it'll just keep growing taller and taller and taller and all that bright pink growth will be way up at the tippy top and I like I like it being bright right here so I just, t I just basically tip prune it back behind the new growth and then it'll flush out pink again this rhododendron is nice and compact so I'm really only going to make sure that I take off this little bit of a chunk out of that fence line. We don't, um, that Hebe and this Rhodey creates sort of a cave for Jasmine. This is her favorite place, which is why her dog bed is in there. Um, that's an outdoor doggy hammock. She loves this place. So I just keep this hole nice and clear so she can get through easy and anyway so I'm not actually gonna do anything here except maybe rake out all the old blooms you can go through here and deadhead these like just like this but it's not necessary they will die off in just a couple of weeks. So if you don't like the way it looks all messy, you can go through and do that. But I usually don't, unless I'm gonna have like a garden tour or something and I really want it to look spectacular. It's not happening anytime soon, so I'm not worried about it. All right, so that project took us about an hour and a half. I'm starting back where we began at the red rhododendron. You could see that it got cut down significantly but now the lemony lace will have plenty of sun as will the perennials down below it. And it's looking great. The other thing that we did in the front yard is just give this pink azalea a little buzz cut and raked out the old blooms. The reason I rake out the old blooms on this azalea is because it is so prolific and it's just completely co coated with bl blossoms and then when they die they just sit on top of the leaves 
preventing photosynthesis for that brand new um, flush of growth right after it's done blooming. So I just kind of tr try to help it out a little bit. I'm going to turn this around and we're going to go look at the roadies in the backyard. But before we leave the front yard, I just wanted to give you a little bit more of a close up here. I've started pruning this roadie kind of down here to gr create all of this lush growth instead of just super leggy stuff like this. That's what all of it was. And so as I do that more and more, we're going to have a more dense, compact um, rhododendron right there eventually. Probably, I'm going to guess like next year I'll be able to get rid of all the rest of that legginess. I'm going to show you this wall of rhododendrons. It's not super easy to see because it's sunny out, but I'll do my best. Um, I'm showing you from my deck to show you just how tall they are. Um, so this is, <laughs> this is one two, three, and four. And I'm not sure if it's going to translate on film, but it goes dark, medium, light purple, and then this pink one showed up this year. The plant didn't show up, but the blooms showed up. So we've been here for five springs and we have never seen that one bloom. But just behind these rhododendrons, there used to be a line of deciduous trees that the power company cut down to remove them from the power lines up there. And so all of these back rhododendrons are getting a lot more sun than they used to. Now, when I planted the new, uh, I can't remember the name, the new rhododendron that's white with the black eye, it's right back behind there. And eventually it will fill in this whole space. I'm showing you from the deck because you can see there's like a little RV there and a truck right there. They're building a house right there. And that's my view. So... The more I can screen that, the better off I am. But that means I have to have second story rhododendrons because my deck is on the second story. So, these rhododendrons are allowed to just get as big as they want. However, this rhododendron and this rhododendron have both been rejuvenated pruned so that they create a nice, dense, compact shrub that you can't really see through and you can see how leggy these rhododendrons back here are and I've started to do a little rejuvenation pruning on those too but I don't want to bring the canopy down so I'm just doing small cuts allowing them to flush out in the bottom and eventually when they get nice and thick up here I'll be able to bring that canopy down a little bit and get rid of that legginess but it's also just how the rhododendrons naturally grow. So, you know, it's kind of nice to have areas in the garden where trees and shrubs can just get as big as they want without having to control their size. All right, starting with the last roadie that I maintained um, on this side, and it goes around the backyard this way. This one barely got trimmed up. I just got it off the fence line there and limbed it up a little bit so when we mow it's easy for us to get there or rake it out. And then of course keeping the opening for Jasmine to walk through and I trimmed the pieris a little bit. Um, these four shrubs tend to grow all together and I try to keep them separated enough so that you could t tell that they are four separate shrubs and give them their own little space. This roadie looks pretty beautiful. I just took it down in size. It was really tall. 
and then trimmed it off of this walkway so we could get through easily. Look, there's still a couple of lingering blossoms on this one. Fun. And then this one, we're also starting to rejuvenate. So you could see all the brand new growth here and all of the woody leggy growth up top. But as more new growth comes down on the bottom and it gets some hype, we'll be able to eventually remove all of that legginess. The next one down is this one here. It looks pretty spindly right now. It actually looks like a native rhododendron, but this is a domestic and it has just had a lot of shade and we're just gonna keep pruning it until it flushes out. The front looks pretty good. The back, ooh, that's a lot of leggy <laughs> branches back there. I couldn't cut it back any further than that. You can't cut trees and shrubs more than one third of its foliage or you can put it in shock. So I did what I could for this year. And the, la the last thing that I'll show you is our poor little magenta rhododendron got cut down to nubs and we're hoping for the best that she'll come back and if she does and she comes back disease free then she'll get to stay but um if she comes back full of disease again then we'll have to remove it in the spring we'll just keep we just raked out but you could see that there's still a little bit of leaf debris we'll treat this area for black spot and rust and we'll try to keep it really clean it'll be a lot easier to keep clean with no foliage there and um, yeah hopefully that'll work it's also kind of beneficial because we planted a honeysuckle right there it needs to get some height to grow over the top of this fence line and this year it's gonna get more than enough Sun for sure without that rhododendron there to get that height and by the time the roadie grows um, she'll be plenty big enough to just get her own sunshine. Thank you so much for watching and coming along with us today as we pruned our rhododendrons. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Maybe you were inspired to get your rhodies all cleaned up or do some pruning on your shrubs. You can see what a difference they can make and if you're not afraid, you can rejuvenate some of your favorite shrubs that might be looking a little spindly, looking a little uh, tired. If you're getting ready to take those out and you still really love them, maybe you want to try to give them a second chance. Just give them a year to grow back and see how they're doing and then you can and then you can really decide. Until the next time, keep celebrating life. We'll see you in the next one.